G'day, my name's Tonga. I'm a user on the Virtual Mechanics um, Forum and I'm trying to achieve my first video response um, today. Basically, um, this video goes out to Arnie, another user on the forum who's asked about um, a way to achieve getting a pop-up from a thumbnail but letting it pop up within the same screen. So your traditional pop-up um, obviously pops up in another browser or a small window uh, but what he wants is something um, that pops up within the same screen as the thumbnail and has a transparent border on it okay so basically what he what I think he's trying to achieve is something here which I've prepared earlier um, don't mean to be cliche but <laughs> okay so you kick on, uh, click on this thumbnail up pops a larger picture that was hidden underneath and then we will click close and get rid of that picture so basically what we're trying to make is not a traditional pop-up um, because basically it doesn't pop up in another window the larger image actually unhides um, when you click on the thumbnail and then rehides when you close it okay so this is the first video I've ever done like this so I hope I don't bore you to death and <laughs> please try and stick with me and I'll make it as um, quick as I can. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to make a border for this um, larger image here. So we'll come over to the left toolbar here to the draw a rectangle button. We'll click on the screen and drag a rectangle the size that we want that will make a border up. Okay, so this rectangle is large enough for this exercise. So I'll just move the rectangle um, and I'll move the picture around a bit just so I can center it where, where I want. So that looks pretty much almost centered to me. So that's good enough for this exercise. Then I'll just grab those and move those up a bit. Next, we need to shade the rectangle, okay? So I'll highlight the rectangle and press enter. Then the object editor will pop up. Now, go to the components tab, push on the shading button, push on color and pick the shade you want. A light gray is what I want. So I'll push on the light gray here press OK, press OK and now that is um, shaded the, the, the colour that I want now you can see that it's actually sitting over the other object um, this box is above this other object because it's the last object that I created or imported into the project so it sits above all others so we'll go up to the top here and we will rename it as border and I'll rename all the objects while I'm here so this is our thumbnail was object 2 so we'll call it thumb and object 3 is our large picture so we'll just call that large pick okay now we want to move this behind this rectangle we want to move it behind um, the large picture. So we'll come down the bottom here and we'll push on the order button here and we'll push back and as you can see it goes back behind the large picture and makes it look like it's got a border on it now. Okay so I'll we'll keep moving along quick as I can. We'll press enter while that border's highlighted. Press on the shading button again and we're going to create some transparency. So if you look at the preview here, this box We'll come down and pre check the transparency mapping box. Come up to where it says trans. And if you watch the box on the left I pointed to before here, you'll see go to it's just a preview of um, the level of transparency adding. So we don't want that much transparency, so I'll um, stop it around here. Press OK, OK. Alright, now you can't see the transparency there because there's nothing behind it so I'll just move these objects over and you can see it there 
So we'll just preview that. See the transparency here. And we'll go back in now to the project. And we'll go to the next step. Now the next step is to set up the closed text. So we'll come over to the text, create formatted text button. Type in close. Whoops, doesn't start with V. Space and capital X. Enter. Whoops. And it doesn't work. We'll try save. Come down here, save and close. There we go. So I'll just grab that object, that text object, and I'll bring it up. I'll bring those borders in on it. Okay, and I'll place that where I want. So that looks good enough there. Okay. Oops. Okay. Now, what I'll do here is we now have to group these objects together. So I'm going to just drag around that. And I'm going to get the close, the border, and the large picture. And we're going to form them into the group. So I'll right click on that, group selected objects. And we'll go up and change it from object date. And we'll rename it to group. Okay. And we'll go back and oh, I forgot to rename the close text. So we'll call that close. And there you go. Now the next step, now that everything is in place, we have all our objects in place. Um, we are now going to add the effects that we need to hide and, hun and unhide um, this object. So we'll go over to thumbnail, click on the thumbnail, come up to special effects, push on the special effects text, come down to the mouse effects text, and the mouse trigger effect box will pop up. Now what we need to do is we need our trigger um, object, which is the thumb, we've already selected that. You can either click on it or you can come here and select whatever object you want. So we want the thumb. Now we need the event. So when the mouse button is pressed on, on the thumb, our action is to show the group. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Then we only want to have this as a one time action, so check that box there. Come over and press apply and press OK. Now, the next thing to do, I shouldn't have gone out of that, I shouldn't have pressed OK, should have just pressed apply. The next thing to do is to, out of the drop down box, choose the close text, because this is our next tri trigger object. So we've got to set this up so when we push on the close text, it shuts again after it's already popped up. So our event is when the mouse button is pressed on, or oh, it presses on the close text, we need to then hide our group. So we'll press apply, make this a one time action only, and only trigger if the object is visible. Now it doesn't matter because it's hidden anyway, but it's just a good habit to um, check that box if needed. Okay, apply, press OK, and we should be finished. We should have um, everything working now. So I'll come up the top here, we'll preview. Okay, we have our thumbnail here. Push on the thumbnail, our um, transparent, tra trans oh, I'm tongue tied, our transparent bordered picture has popped up and we'll push on the close feature and it's closed. So, okay, now. This here is a very basic way to sort of get this done without adding your own um, custom script, which a lot of us beginners sort of don't know how to do. So you can then get this thumbnail 10, 20, 30 times, different thumbnails over your page, and um, you can hide as many photos in the background as you want to pop up. So you can stack as many photos behind here, and when you click on your different thumbnails, they'll pop up. Um, okay, so 
thanks for listening to my first video and I hope it was helpful and um, good luck thanks